way, I came across some uh, good old Hitchens and Buckley in the same conversation talking about, of all things, 1968 and the Vietnam War being interviewed by Mr. The Hoover Institution guy. So, without further delay, let's just jump right in. Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. What's three and a half inches by two and a quarter inches and divided an entire generation of Americans? Here's a hint. Every American male between the ages of 18 and 35 was required by law to have one in his possession. A draft card. You were in Chicago during the Democratic Convention of 1968 and you wrote afterwards, quote, Chicago was seething with tension. to determine its own destiny, the task of perfecting our union moves forward. There had arisen, I suppose it happens in every generation, but I think it was very salient uh, in this one, um, a belief that the government was lying, or rather the recognition, the sudden the shock of recognition that that was true, that the government would lie to you openly and blatantly and on, and on a major thing. I think that, that was the big discovery of that year. It became evident that Castroism was not going to live up to the advertised hopes. So very, it was a... You were how old, Christopher? I was then 19. But the whole notion, the whole Cold War notion that communism was bad, we were good, good. and how much it was just kind of naivete, romanticization of the commies and so on. Well, you, you, you've asked the, the hard questions. I mean, the, fact, the fact is that there was a kind of a listlessness uh, in, in the 60s and that uh, listlessness uh, um, called for a kind of a masturbatory relief. People wanted to find if they could go ahead and get their kicks uh, uh, in, in some way that uh, they hadn't been getting them. And the more so if they could wed them to some, uh, to some ideal. In fact, what it was was, was primarily self-concern and uh, an attempt to, to, to cast a noble perspective on what it is that you were up to. You were engaged in narcissism, Christopher? I think Christopher? I'll have to quarrel um, literally as well as metaphorically with Mr. Buckley's characterization of it as masturbatory. Actually, it was quite celebrated for going the distance. Um, perhaps um, one of the great things about it was that it was the uh, first generation, or, or perhaps one of the less great things about it, but at any rate, one of the true things about it, one of the first generations to take the separation of sex and procreation for granted, which I think led to a great deal of jealousy, incidentally, not to say envy, among preceding generations. But, but the, the, the godfather of that, of that uh, uh, impulse was uh, containment. The doctor of containment had been around uh, since 1945, 45, 46. Uh, Czechoslovakia had uh, provoked uh, a reinvigoration of it, i.e., they must go no further. And uh, behind that uh, impulse is to be sure, a, a perfectly raw uh, <coughs> colonialism, which is everywhere displayed, but also the threat of China doing their, what they did in Korea 10 years earlier. We prevailed in Korea, we prevailed in Berlin, we prevailed in uh, Greece, uh, and uh, we didn't prevail there, but we gave the right signal, that they might say. And your view, a century hence, how will, this be, how will that war be seen? Much more as a crime than a mistake or a blunder, much more consciously committed, and as having done much more damage to American democracy than was recognized at the time. Thirty years after the 1960s, the United States is at peace, abroad, and at home. From there, LP, Emperor Tomato Ketchup. 
Please welcome back Stereo Lab. does one follow Leticia Sadier with Mary Hansen next to her? That song, the Ypres Ypre sound, themes of division and conflict, referring to the first and second battle of Ypres. I think Churchill, among others, said there was no such thing as a battle in World War I, only one continuing, ongoing struggle within which one had to define areas of time. All of this talk and all of this anxiety of World War III, all of this talk of calling what is civil unrest in the United States civil war, we would do well, we'd feel better to take some sober looks at what has truly happened. British Foreign Secretary Sir Edward Grey remarked as this telegram was read, and they knew Britain would become involved in the European conflict. The lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. And although we are facing serious challenges, I think the time for such pessimism has passed in the fact that we have not destroyed the world after everything that happened in the 20th century. The fact of this history being visible to us as functioning humans within an actual culture, this has earned us the right to mean hope when seeing prior history and our potential for the future. So, happy Lunar New Year to those in the East who celebrate it, those in the West who remark upon it and observe Thank you for listening.